Thank you for joining me in this first of several upcoming short presentations about leadership in statistics. Today's presentation, as well as all subsequent ones, fall under the umbrella of the On Leadership series. This series is part of a newly established virtual training initiative sponsored by the ASA Biopharmaceutical section. Allow me to begin today's talk by stating the obvious, that leadership is a broad subject that does not fit under a singular construct, and the concepts of which can be weaved to apply directly to any discipline or area of interest. Given the significant advancements in today's online technologies and social media platforms, there is an endless stream of easily available books or even online videos about leadership in general, many of which lean towards the world of business. In this series, I attempt to highlight some key traits that project effective leadership. I will couch these traits in the context of how they manifest in our area of biopharmaceutical statistics. In this talk, I introduce the notion of the three phases of a person's leadership journey. I explore this idea with a slant that I hope will be easily digestible by biostatisticians at all levels. I end the presentation with some closing remarks, which I hope will prompt a sense of purpose for individuals ranging from junior level statisticians to those in senior management. Let's get started. In his publication last year in the American Statistician, Eric Gibson triggered some interesting thoughts about what he saw as the gaps in leadership among statisticians. His article highlighted two areas where he felt statisticians would do well to step up. The first gap was the visibility of statisticians within their organization. And the second was in their ability to project themselves as a driving force and as an effective collaborator when working in a multidisciplinary team. Gibson's article also suggested three key components that statisticians could benefit from improving. The first was the importance of taking time to listen in order to appreciate differing perspectives. The second, the ability to proactively engage different stakeholders and gain awareness of the big picture. And last but not least, the skill to communicate clearly to non-technical people. A few years earlier, Carl Moore, professor at the DeSaltis Faculty of Management at McGill University, and who in 2005 was identified by Business Strategy Review as being among the world's greatest business thinkers, had offered some perspective on what he coined the three phases of career development. These were build your foundation, differentiate yourself, and develop leadership in yourself and others. This leadership development framework applies across all professions. In this presentation, I use this paradigm as a roadmap to explore how statisticians can develop their individual leadership impact. Let's begin with the first phase of career development Build your foundation. Recognizing that statistics is an applied technical discipline, three key tenets that I believe help establish a statistician's foundation as a leader are first, to affirm technical competency through superior performance. Second, to demonstrate objective and measurable accomplishments. And third, to recognize the importance of developing trust with your stakeholders. 
Let's look at these individually. Superior performance as an anchor for a statistician's foundation can be exemplified in many ways. A common misnomer, however, is to view performance solely in terms of successfully applying complex statistical approaches to solve important business problems. In truth, for statisticians, there is more to what constitutes superior performance. In particular, it includes having sound understanding of a broad range of statistical methods and concepts, but also includes possessing the ability to distill complex problems into smaller systematic steps. Another attribute of key importance to a statistician's performance is learning agility, not only as it pertains to learning new innovative statistical methodologies, but more so in reference to a statistician's understanding of the basic concepts in the area of application of these methods. Another key attribute to ensuring high performance is persistent inquisitiveness. Always ask questions and seek out others' perspectives. Let's move on to accomplishments. The ability to accomplish, or in other words, to get things done, is equally pivotal to establishing one's foundation. As depicted in this cartoon, looking busy and active does not always imply accomplishment. Statisticians should seek to understand the broader business strategy. That way, they can deploy solutions that are suitably aligned to the strategy. Also, transparency with key stakeholders is vital as it brings visibility to progress and unveils inherent challenges. Critical to achieving success is the ability to juggle multiple tasks and to manage effectively the expectations around delivery timelines. Another key attribute in the effort to establish one's foundation is the importance of trust and credibility. As cliche as this may sound, it's important to be reliable. This means being intentional about seeing through your commitments. Loop back when you say you will. Show flexibility and willingness to compromise. Be open to different ideas from others. And finally, be resourceful in finding ways to address matters that you don't have clear answers to. Such resourcefulness is fundamentally a booster of self-confidence. Let's now shift into the second phase in career development towards evolving one's leadership. This phase requires understanding and embracing of what it means to differentiate yourself. As shown in this cartoon, for many statisticians, this is an uncomfortable necessity that they would rather not face, yet recognize they have to grapple with. The idea of differentiating oneself may not come naturally to many statisticians, especially in a multidisciplinary setting where one engages with individuals who have more dynamic personalities. Nonetheless, these three attributes can help pave the way to some degree of self-differentiation. First, understand what it means to engage others and to stay engaged with others. Second, look for your golden nugget, where your strengths can accord you a unique impact. And not least, always place the success of your team first, bringing your strengths to the table to help empower others and forge the team ahead.
As was said by Joe Miller, a prominent voice in the area of women's leadership, don't think outside the box, think like there is no box. Let's now consider each of the three attributes above in a little more depth. Engaging effectively with professional colleagues and stakeholders requires much more than just good interpersonal relations. Of note is that statisticians need to be intentional about understanding their organization's priorities. They also need to get a good appreciation of how the culture of the organization shapes the business environment in pursuit of these priorities. And in addition, how it affects the operating dynamics within project teams. Perhaps the most poignant tip for being able to engage successfully is to focus attention on the common goal that binds you with the people you need to engage. Doing this well opens the possibility for you to influence or impact decisions as well as direction. Let's now look at the second dimension in differentiating oneself, showing distinctive impact or influence. Once the statistician has crossed the threshold of engaging effectively with their team, they can then leverage their unique technical strengths, such as expertise in statistical design and analytics, very much to their favor. For example, they can propose optimal methods that elucidate a stepwise systematic approach to meet objectives, which in turn could offer clarity on the vision for moving forward. In order to make an impact, statisticians need to be bold in asserting their technical perspective, especially so when facing other business colleagues who may not have the technical depth to depict the gaps that the statistician sees. Of great importance to making an impact is the need for statisticians to be brave enough in owning their mistakes, learning from them, and setting a course correction. The third attribute in differentiating oneself is the ability to empower others. In the words of David Wallace, a real leader can somehow get us to do certain things that deep down we think are good and want to be able to do, but usually can't get ourselves to do on our own. Empowerment involves lifting others up by acknowledging their potential, helping them advance, and making them a part of something bigger than themselves. Some essential traits for empowering others include the willingness to learn from them, the readiness to challenge them, and the expertise to guide and mentor them. Not least, of course, is the importance of placing the team first. As illustrated in this cartoon, a brazen display of unnecessary self-vaunting could easily switch off your team and erode your ability to empower. We now come to the third phase of career evolution. Develop leadership in both yourself and in others. Three necessary pillars of accountability for leadership development are the organization, the management teams within the organization, and the individual. The question is, what is expected of each one in order to develop leaders? Let's begin at the macro level. In order to foster leadership development, the organization needs to provide an infrastructure that offers leadership training opportunities. It must also offer a culture that embraces and encourages peer feedback. 
and it will benefit from making available corporate programs that project the richness of mentor-mentee interaction. At the level of people managers, supervisors, and technical leads, there must be a basic expectation of an unyielding impetus to listen, advise, empower, and challenge staff. The zest for doing the right thing must necessarily surpass the temptation to simply do things right. Not least is the role that you must play in propelling your own leadership development. Stay current with advancements in statistics and strengthen your skills for communicating with clarity. Most importantly, bolster your aptitude to engage effectively with stakeholders and colleagues. In closing, we have discussed three basic propositions for enriching your leadership curve. These are build your foundation, differentiate yourself, empower others. Perhaps the single most important takeaway for statisticians at all levels is to recognize that their ability to influence decisions, process, strategy, and personal growth of others will indeed be the true mark of their leadership. Finally, I offer the thought that the three basic propositions discussed in this presentation serve as a gateway to strengthening your degree of influence as a statistician. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and found it useful. I end today's talk by sharing with you a glimpse of the upcoming leadership topics I will present next in the On Leadership series. Thank you for spending this time with me and I look forward to you joining me and delving through future topics in this leadership series.